Welcome to Gavels Down, Voices Up with me, Rachel King. This is where we leave convention at the courtroom door and dive into your real stories, bold and unpopular opinions, and change-making ideas that really shake the legal world up and change where change is desperately needed. I'm here to shake it up, talk about unfiltered insights, and amplify voices that need to be heard. So are you ready? Let's get it. Put the gavels down and the voices up. Welcome back to Gavels Down, Voices Up. My name's Rachel King. I'm back. And today I thought we would talk about something that has been going viral all over my TikToks and probably yours too. What is that? We're talking social media and everything that you put on it. So let's get to the bottom line first before we even get into the goods. If you are involved in a court proceeding or you might become involved in a court proceeding, keep all your business off of social media, off of it. I'm serious, even Snapchat. You know the social media is where it's supposed to disappear right after? They don't. Screenshots can be taken, pictures can be taken. I can't tell you how many times I've had a Snapchat or something similar that my client or opposing party thought was supposed to disappear and never happened. And yet I get shown from the courthouse. It is not great news. And in case you also didn't know, what you put on social media is public and it can be considered by the court. It is not terribly difficult to authenticate a social media post. Another thing, it's not private no matter what your profile settings are. We'll talk about one caveat to that because there is one or maybe a few situations where it may not go over too well with the court, but you shouldn't have done it. So keep your business off of social media. This means anything, even if you are in a criminal case, maybe especially if you're in a criminal case, but even down to custody battles, divorce battles, personal injury claims, property damage. I don't know that I can think of one case where posting the business on social media would actually be beneficial. And once you put it out there, it's public and it's going to be used. Why? Because if somebody is suing you or if you're suing somebody else and the information that you've put in social media helps their case, they are on a mission to find it. Maybe you get hit by a car and you're telling the, the insurance company that they should pay you all sorts of pain and suffering because you are having the worst medical condition of your life. And yet on social media, a couple of days ago, you said that you were super excited to complete a 5k run. Ah, oh, that might not go over so well. Maybe you said you're suing your employer and because your employer had a hostile work environment and yet you have posts all over social media in many different groups about what an ass your boss is and how you think that you just want to screw him or take him to the cleaners. That would for sure be relevant to your case. And I bet your employer would be happy to get their hands on those social media posts. Let's say you're in a custody battle, right? This is the one that is making its rounds and you are trying to get sole custody or primary custody, but you've got a bit of a drinking problem and, or maybe you don't have a drinking problem, but you are posting an awful lot of parties and socializing and other parent decides to use that, whether they are genuinely concerned or whether they're just trying to give you the middle finger and find all of the evidence against you, it can be used. Let's talk about a story. I one time was involved in a case where there were allegations that parent A was using drugs. This was before marijuana was legal, and so we're not gonna get into whether you should actually be smoking pot when you're taking care of your kids, that's not for this. At this time, in this case, marijuana was illegal in the state that this case took place. 
and parent A was being accused of being under the influence and using marijuana quite regularly with and without the child. Of course, parent A is saying, no, 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 I never do that. During this custody battle, parent A was smart enough to take all of the social media posts down and to keep it all off of the internet. That's great news. Locked down their profiles to be as private as possible. Except that during this custody battle, parent A was at a party with parent A's friends and parent A's friends took a picture of themselves smoking a bong in this major party and guess who's right behind them? Parent A is in the background also lighting a bong. So I don't even know if in that case, parent A was aware that they got put into that picture, but it was found and it was used in court as evidence dated, stamped that parent A was using a bong and smoking pot very hard to then tell the court that you do not have any uh, marijuana issues. Maybe you don't have marijuana issues, but you certainly can't really recover if you told the court, I don't smoke pot, which at the time was parent A's position because again, pot was illegal everywhere. And now for a quick break. This episode of Gavel's Down Voices Up is proudly brought to you by King Law Firm Attorneys at Law Incorporated. We're not just about winning cases, we're about making a difference. Whether it's family law, probate litigation, or standing up against elder abuse, we bring experience, empathy, and excellence to the courtroom. At King Law Firm, we're more than lawyers. We're your team in your corner, advocating for your rights and making your voice heard. Visit us at thelawyerking.com and on the socials at The Lawyer King to see how we fight with you and for you. King Law Firm Attorneys at Law Incorporated, where your fight becomes our fight. Now, let's get back to today's episode. You just never know where social media is going to come up. Social media posts, friends tagging them, instant messages, direct messages from Instagram or Facebook, from other family members to the custodial parents that are fighting or to the person. All of this, I have seen all of it being used. I myself have used social media messages that were sent to other people to show evidence. I had one where parent B decided to send a message to parent A's family saying that parent B never planned on co-parenting with parent A ever. Okay, I don't think you actually have that choice once you decided to come together and make a baby. You are required to co-parent even with the crappiest of parents. That was not something that parent a received. It was a message that parent B sent to parent A's family member. But guess what? Family member was like, I don't really like this person. You know who else I've seen come in and bring all of the social media posts and all the social media history? Is your most recent ex. That's right. That person that maybe had your back through the entire proceedings, pushing you to do everything that you could in this lawsuit, and then it just doesn't work out, so they dip out and you guys break up. Man, those people will turn on you in a heartbeat. I've received random letters in the mail from Anonymous with social media posts saying you might be interested in this. After looking through who Anonymous was, there was really only one direction that we could find out that this came from. And yep, you got it. It was their ex, their most recent ex that they had just broken up with, but they'd been talking and giving all of the details about. And now that they broke up, ex is like, I don't even like this person. I'm about to spill my guts. So all it took was a phone call and a subpoena and we put them on the stand. Keep your business off of the internet because it's going to be used against you 100% of the time. If you put it out there, it's going to be used and it's going to be weighed. And if you say it wasn't your account or your account got hacked, all right, you can tell the judge that, but it doesn't take a long time to go through and show that you've used the account since or you've used it before and this was a way that you've communicated. 
not quite the same as social media, but I would say email, same thing. Text message, same thing. It doesn't need to be these formal long letters that we're using to enforce an agreement or say that you said something. If it was via text, it was a one-off email, it can still be used. If you are involved in a court case, keep your business off of social media. I cannot stress this enough. It is so important to me that I put it in my fee agreement. I've yet to meet a lawyer that's like, oh yeah, I don't care if my clients put things on social media. Yes, they do. Yes, they do. If you know an attorney that thinks that this is a good idea, send me their information. I'd love to get their point of view. Remember that if you are co-parenting, or you are in any kind of situation where the court is making orders regarding some kind of relationship that could be domestic violence, it could be an adult situation where a parent has dementia and we need to sort of facilitate some kind of visitation schedule for all of the family. If you are in a situation where the court is could or is going to be making visitation orders or relationship issue orders, Keep it off of social media, even if you're not in court today, even if you're not going through it today, because tomorrow or next year, it's going to be there and it will be found. And you would be shocked, or maybe you won't be shocked to hear that people hold on to stuff for a long, long time, especially when they're raising children together. They know, okay, this parent is an ass or this parent's gonna slip up again. I'm just gonna keep a running file until I have enough evidence to go into court. And so they'll keep it. Keep your business off of social media because your ex is an asshole and is going to use it against you. You got it? All right, good. My name's Rachel King. As always, it's been great. And if you have any great stories about the nonsense that you saw on social media that made or sank a case, I would love to hear it. Until next time. Thanks for tuning in to Gavels Down, Voices Up. Like what you heard? Then don't just sit there. Subscribe, share, and tell me your thoughts. I'm Rachel King, bringing not just my opinions to the mic, but about the courtroom too. Your part, keep listening, keep engaging, and until next time, let's keep those gobbles down and our voices up, unmistakably up.